In this video, I'm going to teach you why you should hide your pins in your blog posts and how to do it. Let's get started. Hey guys, Angie with AngieGenzer.com and I want to talk to you about hiding your Pinterest images within your website pages. So that could be a blog post, it could be a podcast show notes page, maybe a product page, a sales page, a landing page, wherever it is that you are leading people uh, to whatever URL, as long as it's on your own website that you own, you can hide your Pinterest images within your pages. Now, you may be wondering, why do I even want to do this? Why do I, why should I hide Pinterest images? Well, there's a couple reasons. First, when someone comes over to your piece of content, you don't want it completely filled up with pins, with images of different pins. Now, if you remember back to Pinterest marketing tip number 23, I talked about the need to create multiple images for the pieces of content or the products that you are wanting to promote. And you need to change up the images, change up the headlines, have a variety of different pins out there on the network, all leading back to that one specific URL. Now, if you haven't watched that video yet, make sure to go check it out. I've got a link down in the description below for you, but let's head over to my website so I can show and demonstrate this uh, more visually for you. So this is one of my blog posts, one of my most popular posts, what to post on social media, and it's filled with 50 social media post ideas. And first, front and center, I have one image. It's a Pinterest specific image for this blog post, and it's right at the top so that when someone lands on this blog post from Pinterest, they know they're in the right place and they can see a, somewhat of a familiar image. Now I have a lot of different images that I've created over the past couple years for this blog post. So there's a lot of variety of images, but my most recent ones I have actually hidden within the blog post itself. So when you scroll through here, and I'm gonna do a really quick scroll, so I apologize for this. When you scroll through, there are no other of these Pinterest images in here. There's just the one. Because if I put them in somewhere, it would take up this huge chunk of real estate. And especially when someone's scrolling on a mobile device, they're just gonna see pin after pin after pin. And it's not a good user experience. So that's pretty much the main reason you need to not put all the pins, embed them in the post itself. It's a bad user experience. But why do you want to hide them? Well, when someone goes to pin your content, of course they can you know, use your social share buttons that you have on your website, or they can use some sort of browser extension. So I have one from Pinterest and I have one from Tailwind. So let me show you when I click on this button, it will pull up all of the images on this URL, on this blog post that I can pin to Pinterest. And so you can see here that I have four different images. These three right here are hidden within the post itself. So if somebody likes one of these better than the other, they can choose that to pin it. Or let me show you, I also have the Tailwind Chrome extension and it does a very similar thing. It pulls all the images and it allows me to choose which ones. The cool thing about Tailwind is I can choose multiple. So if someone really likes this blog post and it's killer, they could pin out four different pins to it, which is really cool. But the nice thing about this is it gives my user a variety of different images to choose from and options. This works really great too if you are a food blogger or maybe a fashion or fitness blogger and you have a lot of different images of the recipe that you're sharing or maybe the workout and sometimes a different image will resonate better with your end user. And so that's why you want to have those images in there. Now there's another reason that, you know, there's a little bit of speculation here, but from everything that I've researched and learned and webinars I've attended with uh, Pinterest executives sharing their tips, sharing their advice, what I can gather from that is that it actually helps to have your pin image on that URL. So if you share a pin onto Pinterest, 
they want to see that that pin is on that web page. It helps the algorithm know that yes, this is a legitimate piece of content, this is where it's supposed to lead, and it's going to help your pins perform better within the algorithm and within search results. So let's talk about now how to actually hide your pins. Now I know how to do this on a WordPress website. So if you are using a website other than WordPress, you'll need to go into YouTube and do a search on how to hide your pin images or just do a search for how to hide images in whatever it is that you use, Squarespace, Wix, whatever it may be. But so this is specific for a WordPress user. And when you're in your post, so this is the post editor, and you don't want to be on visual, you want to click over to be on text, and then you're going to scroll all the way down to the very end of the post. Once you get to the end here, you are going to add this line of code right here. Now I um, have this code for you in my Pinterest marketing checklist, and you can grab a free copy of that checklist over at angiegenzo.com slash checklist. And in there I have 37 brilliant Pinterest marketing tips that you can use to grow your business. And this is one of them. And I have that line of code in that checklist for you. So you're going to want to put in this line of code. Then you are going to add your images and you just do add media and put in your images and it'll put in the image code there. And then you put in this little piece of code right after it to basically say like, this ends the section that I want to hide. And so that will make these images hidden to the viewer, but the code can still be read by all of the different browser extensions and by Pinterest algorithm. So that's how you hide the images and to create a better user experience for people that come to your piece of content. And again, this can work for a blog post, a landing page, a sales page, a product page, pretty much any page that you own. So you can't do this for an Etsy page or maybe even an eBay page, that won't work. But if you own the website, you own that URL, you can make this work for any of those, okay? So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please comment down below. Leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. It makes my day. It powers me to keep creating these videos for you. And then be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, just click that button to subscribe so you get notified every time I publish a new Pinterest marketing tip and a new video to help you grow your business using social media and digital marketing. And again, don't forget to download that free checklist that I have for you. I've got a link down below and I will see you in the next video.